We don't see start video button. Hello, Dr. Clark. Hey, good Disha morning. Here. Good morning. Good morning. You Disha? Yeah, Disha here. What time is it? What, what time is it where you are? So we, uh, we are exactly 5.32 p.m. here in India. 5.30 p.m.? Yes, yes. It's exactly 12 hours, 12 and a half hours different. So, Dr. Clark, I'll quickly introduce. Um, are we ready to start? I think we're already live on Facebook. Yeah, I, let me find out here just a minute. Uh, we're getting we're getting my video up and going now in just a minute. I tried, I just tried that, so I just tried doing, and I tried going in and resetting it, and it won't let me. Okay, so we can't, we can't show anybody's faces. Mm -mm. How long would it take to fix it? Who would have to log back? I don't even know. Okay, is, is my microphone up? Hello, Disha. Hello, Disha.
Hello, Disha, can you hear us? Hello, I guess uh, Disha's, uh, I mean, uh, connection is uh, not that great. I guess you can start the webinar because there is uh, cyclonic conditions in uh, Kolkata. So, yeah. yeah, so probably, you know, it, uh, we, we can start the webinar. There's no problem. She okay, told now, me that in case there is any problem, you can continue. There's no issue. Okay. Um, we have a little bit of problem on, on our end. We, okay. we can, um, we're going to be able to do the presentation. And we're okay. going to be able to do my live demo, but okay. my my the uh, the setting got changed on the video, and no one can show their face this today, unfortunately. Just okay. voices. Is that okay? Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and introduce me, then we'll get started. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. One second. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So, a very good evening to all the dentists uh, in India and a very good morning to Dr. Clark. The weather out here in Kolkata presently calm and beautiful, but uh, you know, we have been experiencing very high winds and torrential rains last night. Like the cyclone Amphan roaring in the Bay of Bengal, today we also have Amphan of Restorative Dentistry, Dr. David Clark with us live on Facebook. I would sincerely like to thank uh, my mentor and our guest speaker for the evening, Dr. Clark, on behalf of Endo Haveli team, Dr. Rahul, Dr. Shashank, and rest of the team members for accepting our invite for the webinar in these difficult COVID times. We are so lucky to host you for not one, but two webinars. Dr. Clark, honestly, I was overwhelmed by extreme joy when I received the mail from Tanya. Friends, let me tell you, he is uh, one of the best something? teacher. Um, yeah, hello. I'm Dr. introducing Sankit. Dr. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sankit, I'll just cut in. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll do the part. I have a okay. connection, okay? Okay, okay. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. That will be great, uh, Disha. Friends, yeah. let me tell you. I have not met any teacher as dynamic and enthusiastic about teaching as Dr. Clark, the inventor of the famous bioclear matrices. It was in 1983, Dr. Clark received his dental degree from the University of Washington School of Dentistry, school which has been home to many legends like Dr. R. V. Tucker. For those who do not know Dr. R. V. Tucker, he is a legend known for cast gold restorations. Dr. Clark's goal with composite dentistry has always been to elevate its longevity and health to gold standards of his predecessors. To accomplish that, he embarked on a quest to develop modern cavity preparation, matrices, wedges, filling and polishing methods to bring composite dentistry out of the dark ages. Not only this, Dr. David Clark is also the founder of Academy of Microscope Enhanced Dentistry, AMED. AMED is an international association which was formed to advance the science and practice of microendodontics, microperiodontics, microprosthodontics, and microdentistry. He is also the editor in chief for 2005 launch of Journal of Microscopic Dentistry. He was one of the pioneers of microscope in restorative dentistry and was the first to install ceiling tracks to facilitate the use of microscope in more than one operatory. Dr. Clark has authored several landmark articles about microscope dentistry, including aesthetic dentistry, sealants, microimaging and practice management, crack diagnosis, and the role of ultrasonics in three-dimensional shaping and restoration of non-vital teeth. Dr. Clark is constantly developing new techniques and materials to better restore an endodontically treated tooth. Um, Dr. Clark, I had seen in one of your recent webinars, you had introduced the new deep caries matrices, and honestly, they look phenomenal. Today, Dr. Clark will be introducing the concept and the philosophy behind the bioclear techniques. He will also give us a live demo on dentoform of peg lateral with delayed wedging and sculpting and rockstar polishing. So friends, let's begin. And I wish you all 
an awesome bioplay experience with Dr. David Clark. Dr. Clark, the over to you. Good morning, good morning, Disha. It's uh, very, it's very early here. Uh, we're just getting set up for a wonderful webinar with everyone. I'm so excited to uh, to uh, be back in India. It's, I think I was in India. I don't know. I think it was seven or eight years ago. So I uh, I'm back. <laughs> um, yes. And we look forward to have you here. That would be lovely. There's no problem. Okay. So, so uh, what I'm going to be doing is uh, we're going to be starting with the presentation in uh, just a moment. Uh, one of the things that happened this morning is we we don't get to see anybody's faces this morning. You won't you won't see my bright sparkly face. So we're just going to have to go straight to the PowerPoint. Hopefully for the next webinar, we'll be able to have the camera on my face, but this morning you won't be able to see me, okay? Okay. Um, the next thing we need to talk about is that we're going to be taking comments and questions from the attendees as we go along. Okay. And so we need to make sure that uh, because we're not going to be able to hear the voices of some of the people with the questions. They need to be able to uh, ask me questions and how will they do that this morning, Kursa? So what I'll need to do is to have Disha or someone um, read the questions from the Facebook Live, okay? Because we're doing this through Zoom. Um, I'll be doing that. I will. I'm in contact with my team, and they'll be uh, referring me the questions, and I'll post it. Okay. And then, uh, Carissa, where will I see those questions? You'll post it here on Zoom. Uh, I'll 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 speak out. You'll have to say them out loud. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and um, uh, get started. First of all, I really want to thank Disha for reaching out. Uh, Disha is a great and lovely friend of mine. You know, the great thing about this international dental world is that I get to have this wonderful family. And so Dish is like a sister to me. It's, it's wonderful that we are all able to grow together and to share. Um, and so Thank what I'll- Thank you so much, Dr. Clark. It's an honor. Wonderful. So, um, I like I said, I wanna welcome everyone. I, wanna, I want everyone to feel, uh, part of this big family feel um uh don't be uh don't be shy ask any question that you would like today my job today is to is to be a servant to all of you and um so i'm going to go ahead and uh we'll go ahead, yeah, go ahead and minimize hers for now so what i'm going to be doing uh disha is i'll be presenting um uh, powerpoint and then we're going to stop um, and do a demonstration in about uh, 20 or 30 minutes. We'll be doing the peg lateral. And then um, we'll, we'll show some more slides and then I'm going to be having you show your uh, presentation at about an hour and a half into the presentation. Does that sound all right, Disha? Hello? Okay, so yeah, that should be all right. Okay, good. And that was that. Now, who was that just speaking? Was that? Um, yeah, yeah. This is Doctor Sanket here, one of the team members of Endo Haveli. Yeah. So and, and yeah. Yeah. So we we may we may lose her from time to yeah, time. Yeah, because of the cyclone. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And 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 then may, may, and let me make sure to pronounce your name correctly. It's Sanket. What is it? Sanket. That's right. That's right. Sanket. Okay, Sanket. Yeah. All right. Very nice, Sanket. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Can let's get started. Yeah. Can San Kate, can you see my screen? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's BioClear 3M and Comet Restorative Solutions. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. What you see behind you is Mount Rainier. That's that's our uh, that's the mountain in our backyard here at the in Tacoma, and uh, okay. so that is that is our that is our screen that we like to share, and I want to thank our, our partners, both uh, 3M and Comet that have helped us to develop uh, the entire BioClear method. And so I wanted to give a thanks to them. 
well, we have four learning centers and hopefully we'll have a learning center someday in India. We now have a learning center in the UK in Varberg, Sweden and in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, what we're doing with our learning centers is developing curriculum for private practice and also curriculum for the dental schools. And so for any of the uh, doctors that are joining us today, we would love to work with any of the schools in India that are interested in the biocare method. And we have uh, a great amount of research that's been done on the biocare method that we can share with the attendees and we can send that at a, at a later date. Uh, we're really focusing on the clinical uh, techniques today. I know those te techniques are supported with great science, but we're, you know, we won't be worrying about showing any scientific studies today. Today is all about how to do the dentistry, how to do the biochem method on a day-to-day -day basis. If you would like to get some of the scientific studies and some of the articles and videos, you can send an email to solutions at biochromatrix.com. We will email you a link and then you can go back there. And there are many, many folders with uh, different presentations and videos. There's quite a bit of information there. You'll have to, it's like a big library. You'll have to take time. Also, uh, will we be recording this webinar today? It should be recorded. So you will have access to the recorded version of this webinar. Uh, later to um, later today. That's great. So um, this is a screen that I like to show the on the top row, you see um, a case that I treated 10 years ago. So the top teeth, you, you can see that there are some large amalgams in those teeth. Uh, I, I, I do a lot of lecturing on and done a lot of research on crack teeth. And the, uh, the first molar and the second bicuspid were cracked on my friend Jim. So this is my, the top teeth belong to my friend Jim and he's a bit of an engineer. And I told Jim that his teeth were cracked and that he needed to have crowns done. This was 15 years ago. And Jim says, I, I don't want crowns on my teeth. They don't hurt. And I've heard that crowns are destructive and you have to take a lot of the tooth away and I might need root canals later. And I was sort of shocked because Jim is my friend and <laughs> I thought Jim doesn't trust me. And so I said, well, okay, Jim, and a few years went by. And then I said, you know, Jim, we're developing the BioClear method and we're going to do uh, the BioClear procedure for these teeth uh, with calla lilies and cuspal overlays and your teeth uh, should not need root canals later. There's almost a zero chance you need root canals. We'll preserve most of your tooth structure. We won't cut it away like a crown. And Jim said, great, let's go ahead and do the procedure. So now I'm showing a 10 year post-operative view that's Filtech Supreme Ultra, that's monolithic injection over molded composite after 10 years. And so the, root, the real true test is long-term clinical outcomes. And so we don't see a lot of long-term clinical outcomes with composite. And that's because a lot of the times it doesn't last very well. So we see a lot of people in the world doing a lot of crowns, especially in the United States, especially in North America. Too many crowns, too early on the tooth. Um, the bottom row of teeth uh, is a six-year post-operative view of, the, of a black triangle case. And the, the teeth on the bottom, these were actually, this is a, an orthodontist who flew to Tacoma from New York City to have her black triangles closed. Boy, she just hated those black triangles. And that's a six-year post-op of injection over-molded composite. And the patients absolutely love the biochem method. The patients are the, in the United States, the patients are a major driving force for bioclear. They're coming into offices today and demanding bioclear. And if the dentist does not do the bioclear method, if they have no training and if they don't use the bioclear materials, and in some cases, 3M materials, then the patient says, I will find someone who is trained in bioclear. So we have a revolution in, um, in dentistry with what we call a third place. We have bonding, which is okay. We have crowns, which are, which a lot of people think are beautiful. And, and I've done a lot of crowns, but at a very high physiologic cost. And now we have a third place. And that third place is injection over molded monolithic composite. It has, it has its own aesthetic, which is different than porcelain and different than bonding. And patients tend to love the simplicity 
the beauty, the conservative nature of the Byclair method. So at the end of the day, who is the boss? <laughs> the boss is the patient. The boss is the pulp. And, and the long-term outcomes are the greatest indicator. So it's nice after all these years that I can show these long-term outcomes. I didn't have these 15 years ago. We were just getting started. So today is a different day and the world is looking at the Biocrim method as, as something very important uh, in the dental landscape. So um, what I'd like to do, uh, Sanket, is um, if people have questions about uh, it, it have, you know, about the slides as we go along, we have time to answer those questions. I always, you know, the whole thing with lecturing at the webinar, it's always, I always feel disconnected from my people. <laughs> so. No, we understand people, that. Yeah. If people have questions about this case, let's, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about it now. We'll be, we'll be showing the, the, bio, the um, we'll be showing the, this black triangle case in just a little bit. So. Uh, does anybody have any questions that we need to answer before we move forward, Sanket? Let me check. Um, is everybody able to switch on their microphones? Um, I see a lot of people have not, their micro, the microphones are not on. So I'm not sure, is, uh, is everybody able to speak? Um, the, the panelists I just have to hit their uh, unmute on the microphone if they want to ask a question. How many panelists do we have? I think around 16. Uh, yeah. Yes, we are able to hear you. Okay. okay. Yes, sir, you can just ask any questions. If you have any questions, you can just ask Dr. Clark. Uh, sir, right now I'm just watching your beautiful cases. As you progress further, I'll definitely pop up some questions. Beautiful. All right. Since, since I cannot see the questions, I'll be relying on you to and f and feel free to interrupt as 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 appropriate okay definitely sir one of the things that i think is the most interesting when you look at this is these the beautiful radiographic appearance of the biochar method it, it looks very different than anything we've ever seen before it's as if the composite and the tooth are one uh, entity one person so what is bioclear well bioclear started as these beautiful matrices and then as I began to use the matrices, I realized that I could not use them in the old way and that I would need to develop the BioClear method. So some people are just using the matrix and that's great, but they're really doing sort of bonding and layering and not injection molding with BioClear. And so there are a lot of different ways to use the matrix. Um, I really don't have a lot of interest in talking about doing bonding with uh, Biochrome matrix. I just want to talk about the Biochrome method. To me, that is the exciting thing. So I'm going to show you um, a case. This is just, we're, and we're going to be doing the peg lateral here in just a little bit. So the this is an article that I wrote called Double Trouble. Kind of, I'm a, kind of having fun here. Uh, Twins with peg laterals. So this is an article that was I did for Dentistry Today. The video, there's a clinical video of injection over molding the of the their their teeth on the dentistry today website so i've got a pair of identical twins these girls are 13 years old and so these are the preoperative photographs and i'll tell you the story about the twins so in the united states we have um, different specialties that are very uh, limited the orthodontist typically only do orthodontics the endodontist only does endodontics I know I met a lot of I met a lot of endodontists in Italy, in India that actually do aesthetic dentistry. So, the India I think t people tend to have are more are more well rounded, more more uh, more balanced. They do lots uh, of different so, things. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Clark, in India we have, have our degree together with the endodontics. So we have endodontics and conservative dentistry. So the, the restorative part is covered with the endodontics. We do not have a separate restorative dentistry as a subject. So right. we have a prosthodontics and we have a conservative dentistry. Yeah. And and so um, in, 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 in the United States, it's very rare for a specialist to do anything other than the specialty, for example. So the, um, the, the girls, uh, these twins, 
had their orthodontics done by an orthodontist who didn't know anything about Bioclear. And this is quite a while ago, didn't know anything about me. And so the twins ended up coming to me and the orthodontist said to me, she, the orthodontist said, uh, Dr. Clark, I want you to do some bonding on the peg laterals. And the, the, um, the thought process is that, you know, the bonding is kind of temporary and it's just a couple hundred dollars for a tooth and, and, and it, the expectations are different. And I told the orthodontist that I wasn't going to do bonding, that I was going to do the Bioclear method and that he was very uh, intrigued, he was interested. And so I, I told the orthodontist that I would uh, explain after I finished the treatment. And so before we, um, before we talk about the treatment that was done for the twins, I want everyone to look at the twin on the left. And I, I want you to notice what she's doing with her tongue. What do you think the twin on the left is doing with her tongue? Well, I want to I wanna ask everybody uh, that's watching, what do, you think, what do you think the twin on the left is doing? Why is her tongue behind her teeth? So I'll wait for I'll wait for the answer. I I know the answer, Dr. Clark. <laughs> well, you can't tell the answer. <laughs> so she's just hiding the anybody else, please go ahead. Interesting. She's just hiding all the negative spaces. So, you know, the smile looks better. Yes. And so um, a lot of people, when, a lot of dentists, when they look at this, they think that she has a tongue thrust problem because she has an, or she has an airway problem. But in reality, the twin is hiding her teeth, the, the harsh negative space. So um, the, the, it's all about absolute essence and the, uh, contrast between white and black is very, very harsh compared to the contrast between white and pink. So sometimes these kids they figure out that if they put their tongue behind their teeth, it doesn't look as bad. So here she is. I told her to pull her tongue back and you can see that she has uh, undersized lateral incisors. And remember the orthodontist asked me to do some bonding. And I looked at the case and I said, well, let me ask everyone that's watching can I do a good job for these for these identical twins if I do just bonding on the laterals? Will that look good if I just do the lateral incisors? Is that going to satisfy the case aesthetically? And the mother told me that she wanted me to um, to do the most conservative thing. She said, you know, she loves her girls and she, she does not want to compromise. On the other hand, you know, um, she uh, doesn't want to spend any more money than she has to, and she doesn't want to make the case any more complicated. And so she said to me, you know, if these were your girls, what would be the least amount of treatment, but without any compromise? So what I want to ask all the people watching, how many teeth would you treat? And let's say that you're an expert in BioClear in an additive dentistry, and you have full confidence that these, that these teeth can last for 20 years, at least 10 years, with injection over molding. Let me ask the people, how many teeth you're going to do? So let's get some comments from the attendees about what, the, what a proper treatment plan might be for these girls. And remember, they're 13 years old. So let's wait to see how many teeth that people want to do. Is it just the laterals? I think only lateral would also do. What's that? Only both the laterals also you can treat. You need not uh, probably uh, applying the principles of conservative dentistry and do as minimum as possible. Treat only both the laterals. Okay, so that's one idea. Okay, let's see some other ideas. Yeah. Uh, oh, veneers. I think I would treat I would treat with the lateral and the canine because the space looks really wide if we just do the uh, lateral. Now, maybe all six, maybe all six. Okay, so Dish is thinking four, maybe six. The first doctor said just the laterals to be the most conservative. 
But remember, the mom says, I want to have an aesthetically ideal case. So let's see what else some of the other people say. The distal of uh, centrals and uh, both mesial and distals of laterals. Okay. But I want you to look at this picture right here. Can everyone see this? The distal of this peg lateral, how are you going to close that space aesthetically with doing just the lateral? Are you sure you don't want to add the canine? Look at that space. It's a big space. That's going to look pretty weird, I think. So you could do this case a lot of ways. Um, but I'll go ahead and tell you what I did was I got started on the case. I looked at the space, especially here. I said, nope, we're going to do all six of the anterior teeth. Um, because not only did the patients want to have the space closed, they did not like the gray incisal edges. I know that for many years, people thought that doing uh, translucency and layering for translucency <laughs> was exciting, but most patients really don't like uh, the gray tooth. They want, I mean, why do people bleach their teeth? Because they want them to be more opaque and they want them to be bright. So uh, these are the matrices that I used in the case. I used the, uh, with the classic biochro system, these are the, uh, the, the green or diastema closure version of the matrices. In her case, I used the DC-202s, DC-201s, and DC-203s. We'll talk about those matrices here in a minute. Um, this is the DC-202. I did trim them matrix. I'll talk about that in just a bit. Here we are with the BioClear Aquarium. We like to call this the aquarium. Once we wrap the tooth with the BioClear matrices and stabilize them, it allows for um, injection of heated composites, both the, we put in adhesive as a surfactant and then flowable and then paste. And then when we surround the tooth with the matrices, it allows it to basically crown the tooth. The polymerization shrinkage is a favorable, actually. We like polymerization shrinkage in the, in the BioClear method in many applications because it actually puts the tooth into compression just shrink, we shrink wrap the tooth, as we say. And there it is, there's the, there's the acid etch. We've been able to reflect the soft tissue apically with a well-punched uh, rubber dam. I've already completed the central incisors. Here is the preoperative view of that uh, from the lateral view. There are the, um, what we, there's the, what we call the hip. We're gonna take heated flowable composite and put a one to two millimeter hip in there, we'll hold the matrices and stabilize them. We'll light cure that. And then we'll do what's called delayed wedging, which we're gonna show you in a minute. We'll put the diamond wedges in on the mesial and distal. That pushes the teeth apart. And then we'll injection mold the rest. And there's the post-operative view. So that is a lateral view where I did the canines, the centrals, we, um, and the laterals, all six teeth. So I did six teeth on both of the twins. And there we are, pre-op and post-op. That is the BioClear method. It is not bonding. There are no margins here. The infinity edge does not stain. But when we injection mold, we injection over mold, usually most or all of the tooth. And then we have to teach the doctors how to quickly and safely sculpt the extra composite away that's in the injection zone and then maintain the bioclear zone, which is everyday, which is an everyday job for bioclear dentists. It's new to a lot of people watching today, but if you do bioclear every day like I do, it's just like getting up in the morning and having a cup of tea. It's just what we do. So here's the preoperative, and there is the postoperative. So I did all six teeth. And so this is kind of fun. The twin on the left had the BioClear uh, treatment done on Tuesday. And then the twin on the right, this is, is Wednesday, she's about to get in the chair and have her six teeth done. So I thought it was kind of fun to take a look uh, <laughs> when I had one twin all done and the other was ready to go. I think the twin on the left was born first. So mom said that she got to have her BioClear done first. I, this, and isn't this cute? Isn't this fun? Isn't this why we went to dental school to touch the lives of these wonderful young people? 
And these little girls, they're, they're 13 years old. They have another 90 years to live. And so I satisfied the objectives of the Bicler method. This is a, this is a gift. I just keep cycling through and through. So here we are preoperative. Here we are postoperative. And so what a life changer, what a change. So the three goals of the Bicler method are number one, preserve. Preserve and respect the natural tooth volume and the natural biomechanics. I didn't cut the teeth at all. All we did was disclose and blast to remove biofilm. The next thing is to replace, replace the missing or the disease or the broken tooth structure. And the third goal of the Biocrim method is to thicken and opacify a thin, dark teeth. People don't like dark teeth. And so the biocular look is something that patients love. It's smooth, it's, it feels more natural to them. The pulp is not affected. These teeth have zero sensitivity. It is something that patients are absolutely in love with. Now, not every dentist loves Bioclear because dentists have habits and we have biases and we think we have to put 10 layers in the tooth and we, have, we think we have to cut the tooth and all of these things are in our heads. And so this is a three-year follow-up of the twins. And here is a seven-year follow-up. So the girls are now 20 years old and these are the twins. And you know, what's funny is that the twin on the left, I believe, won an award in her high school. Um, and she won the best smile. In America, they have these crazy things. They have elections in high schools. And the girl on the left won the best smile in her high school. And if she won the best smile in her high school, I'm happy. I'm content. I don't care. You know, if when I go to some of these fancy academies of aesthetic dentistry, they might say, oh, something negative about the case. I don't care. These girls love their smiles. It, I didn't cut the teeth at all. Mother is so happy. And she won the best smile in her entire high school. So you know what? I would rather win that award than an award from some academy of, of, of aesthetic dentistry with a bunch of old dentists. <laughs> so part of the biker culture is that we put our patients first the patient is the boss. It is a patient-centered outcome, not a doctor-centered outcome. And so uh, why don't we stop for just a minute and I can back these slides up um, and you can take a look or ask questions about the case. Um, they, we used uh, Filtech Supreme Ultra. This, we used the white shade. They wanted bright teeth. We could, I usually use B1, but they wanted white. So it's a little bit brighter than I sometimes do. So um, these teeth feel smooth and healthy and strong. Um, and so I'm curious to see what everyone thinks of the aesthetic of the case or if people have questions about, um, about matrix selection or anything else about the case. We're gonna show you how to do this in just a minute. So let's, let's open this up for questions real quickly about the twins. So Dr. Clark, at age of 13, uh, I would not want to do the veneers. So if not bioclear, what option do we have? Direct bonding? Yeah, there, there are no other options that, that, that I'm, I would be comfortable with because bonding is, I don't do it. I'm tired of it. It's, it, it's embarrassing. It breaks. I haven't done any bonding in 15 years um, and it's not profitable. We're trying to do our patient a favor, but a lot of the times it, it, we, we, it's, we don't do them a favor. If you were to put pour some veneers on these teeth at age 13, what's that going to do to the opposing teeth over the next 90 years? Porcelain is, you know, at least seven times harder than enamel. It's going to wear out the lowers. And what happens when her gums move? The, the soft tissue, these teeth are still erupting. If you have a margin, it's going to show. With the Bioclear method, there are no margins. Let me back up and take a look here. When you see the, um, when you see this, with the infinity edge, if her gums recede, the, the margin is so um, blended with the Bioclear method with the infinity edge that it's okay for the gums to recede, which they are going to move as these teeth continue to erupt until the girls are uh, in their mid-20s. So, 
there, yeah, I think Disha, that's great. What, what other alternatives do we have? And these girls want to start smiling today. They want to be confident today. They want to have their picture taken. They want to take selfies today, not tomorrow, next, not next year, right now. And that affords patients what they want. They want it beautiful and strong and healthy, and they want it done by five o'clock. Well, we can do that now. Yeah, I let's, agree. Let's uh, see. Let's see what, Disha, do we have any comments from the some of the doctors watching? Uh, yes, I do have a question from one of the doctors, um, Dr. Ahmed. So he's asking, when we close the black triangles, there's a difference in contact and contour. Won't that be deleterious effect on interdental gingiva? One of the interesting things is people um, are always asking questions about the periodontal health of a case. When the Biker method is done appropriately, the periodontists, and there are many, many periodontists who are working with us with the Biker method, their observation has been that the soft tissue health actually improves because we have less food impaction, less area for bacteria to accumulate. If you look at the studies, a patient with the black triangle generally has less periodontal health than a patient with the full papilla. And that's because there's all this space for food impaction um, and just more bacterial accumulation. And so um, if the, if the bioclear procedure is done appropriately, we see that we have an improvement in the periodontal health or at least the same. One of the things that we've seen with periodontal patients and orthodontic patients, because the contact is so broad, we see less mobility. So for example, in my, I, ha I have bioclear in my teeth and I had black triangles with point contacts. My teeth have less food impaction and less pulpal pain because food impaction can lead to pulpal pain and mobility. So my teeth actually have decreased mobility. So I know that it may seem um, counterintuitive, but we have to create broad contacts if we're going to have a stable and healthy periodontium. If we have a point contact in loose teeth, they are, they are less healthy. Now, it would be great if the patient never got a black triangle, right? But once it happens, we have to do something. And that something improves the quality of life for that patient. So that, that's a question that we run into, I think, early on with BioClear. I think people, once people start doing BioClear, they realize and, and they can do their own research that, the, that we see a lot of great help um, after BioClear. Remember, the margins around BioClear are so incredibly uh, precise that the soft tissue um, responds beautifully. But that, if that's a good question, and I get that question, I think for people that with, with they're new to bioclear, that's a question that comes up all the time. So I appreciate that question. Uh, Disha, do we have any other questions? We have a question. Let me, let me, uh, back, from let, Dr. let me back up here just a little bit. And I wanna add, so the question is, how does the soft tissue look before uh, pre and postoperatively with this with this um, young lady, I want you to look at the color, the texture of the soft tissue. Um, it's a very a very reasonable texture and color for the for the periodontium in this case. So, if you had a overhang, if you have a crown margin, if you packed cord, if you cut the tooth, it's not going to look like this that we see this soft tissue response with BioClear. And that's why so many periodontists are very excited. And yes, we would love to see some studies done. We would love to see some studies done um, with uh, clinical outcomes with uh, careful BioClear treatment for black triangles and, and peg laterals. Uh, go ahead, Disha. Uh, so Dr. Rohit has a question. Um, he, he asked, uh, do all BioClear matrices need customization? Um, can you explain a little about that? The, the original BioClear uh, needs customization uh, because they are basically a matrix that can do everything. And then once we built the original BioClear series, we developed, we're developing other matrices that uh, very, need very little trimming. So we'll talk a little bit about the black triangle matrices 
the black triangle matrices do not need trimming. I almost never trim a black triangle matrix. Uh, the 360 veneer matrix needs some trimming, but less trimming than original bioclear. Um, so there is some matrix trimming and modification that's just part of being a master of bioclear. We would have to have 500 matrices, Disha, if we, <laughs> if we, 500 different types, if we were never wanted to trim the matrix. But trimming the matrix is fun. It, uh, it, makes, it makes you feel like a master. It, it sort of unlocks the potential of bioclear. Because remember, every patient's a little bit different. The attachment is different. Some people have a large papilla. Some people have a very blunted papilla. Some people have a high zenith. Some people have no zenith. So there are so many varieties in the mouth that the true masters of Bioclear are never afraid to modify the matrix. That, but, but that's a great question. I love these questions. It, it means that everybody's really thinking and everyone is really engaged, which is great. Okay, Desha, other questions? Uh, yes, I have one more from Dr. Sanket. So he says, how to select appropriate metrics for these kind of cases? Ah, okay. Well, meaning the, meaning the size, the size. Yep, yep, yep. So um, that is why we have BioClear classes. And so there is so much to learn. It's not that BioClear is complicated. It's just that there's so many things that we can do. So um, we can, uh, there are other webinars that we, we, can, we, can, uh, we can send to you or other information about matrix selection. And um, I don't have a video camera on my face today, so I can't explain uh, the uh, matrix selection. Maybe if we, at our next webinar, I'll talk a little bit about uh, anterior matrix selection since the camera isn't working today. Um, but that is a, uh, like I said, BioClear is a journey and we are taking the first step today and we have a hundred more steps to take because there's so many things that we can do. You know, Disha, this is amazing. I did a case yesterday, mm -hmm. the distal of a canine. I had to invent a way to create a tight contact that I'd never done before. And I'm thinking, wow, I invented this 20 years ago and I'm still getting better 20 years later. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> I think it's going to be a, a, a really long journey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have to keep coming back to learn from you. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things that we can do. I'm amazed. I invented this and I am still learning. I'm actually getting better every day for 20 years. <laughs> so everybody has to be patient. All right. So I want to tell you a little bit about my journey. This is me. Um, I've got a, I'm, this is 20, five years ago, I'm just out of dental school and I'm using flat mylar because that's all that we had. And I had a new camera. So I took pictures of this composite case. So, so we're going to tell a little story. And this is 25 Dr. years. Clark? Yes. Uh, Dr. Clark, just one minute. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of disturbance at the background. So we have some disturbance. Uh, so guys, if you can just mute yourselves. Um, and if you have a question, you can just uh, unmute. Ah, so what we need everyone to do is to mute your microphone unless you have a question. Because, yeah. you know, we have barking dogs and cyclones and ca cars honking their horns. <laughs> so everybody, everybody turn your microphone off unless you're ready to ask a question. Is that, is that what you're saying, Disha? Yes, Dr. Chuck. Okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right, so let me tell my stories that this was 20 years ago, I think. I, I, I'm, I'm just out of dental school, I think 25 years ago. I have my new camera and I've got my flat mylar and this guy came in, he had a deep, uh, he had an old filling, took it out. And this was, the, this was the standard of care. I put a wooden wedge in there because that's what we had. And I had a really nice margin on this. I was so proud of my margin right here. So you know, it's funny, I, I, I put the composite in the tooth and I'm gonna be doing some smoothing in a minute. And I, I don't have that slide, but um, I were, still remember doing this case and I handed the, the patient some floss. Now, if you can see my little arrow right here, but as I finished, the, I finished this, took the rubber dam off 
and gave him some floss. And I said, I want you to feel the margin here. Your margin is so amazing because <laughs> I, I love margins. I still do. And the guy was so upset. He goes, look at this. It looks terrible. It's got this stupid black triangle. And I said, what is a black triangle? <laughs> this is 20 years ago. I said, what is a black triangle? And he goes this, he pointed his finger. He says, it's this huge space. It wasn't there before. He says, fix it. This is horrible. And I said, well, I, uh, margins, margins are the only thing that matters. And the old, this guy says, no, this is ugly. Make it go away. And I said, well, I don't have a curved matrix and I, I'm supposed to use a wooden wedge. And he said three words I'll never forget. I don't care, make it go away. So I, I swore to myself that day, 25 years ago, Disha, that I would find a solution for this poor old guy. So uh, when we take a look at these, the legacy of old concepts, old materials, not thinking about a patient-centered outcome, um, I thought it was great and the patient thought it was terrible. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Well, it's not that funny. And so um, then I invented the Bioclear Matrix. So here's a case. These are A103 matrices and I'm going to be training some black triangles and I'm, I'm doing two at a time, which is what I used to do back then. You can see that the matrix is seated fully. It goes all the way down to the bottom of the sulcus. I looked under my microscope. I do all my dentistry with the microscope. I looked under the microscope and I said, wow, look at that. These margins are gonna be amazing and I'm not gonna have a black triangle and I know it's gonna be healthy. I need to come up with a method. I need to figure out how to get the composite, the composite in there to this infinity edge. And that was the day that the Bioclear method started. And that was a long time ago. And so we need to move beyond flat mylar and we need to move beyond cutting the teeth. We need to move beyond a, a doctor centered outcome to a patient centered outcome. And that is the, that is the journey of the Bioclear method. And so this is bonding. This is the B word, right? This is what bonding, unfortunately, looks like when you take cold com composite and you put it in by hand with flat mylar, that's what it looks like to treat a black triangle. Now on the bottom, you can see a very different look to treatment of black triangles with the Bioclear method. So I, I obviously, I did not do the top teeth. I did the bottom teeth. So let me ask the people that are watching the webinar, what does this, what does this x-ray look like? What kind of flower do these lower incisors look like? So let's open up the microphone. Because when I first did these restorations, I, the x-rays looked weird, right? They looked foreign to my eyes. So Disha, do we have any comments? What kind of flower do these bottom teeth look like? Not yet. What's that? So we've got a bit of a wait with Facebook. So we'll wait for people to comment. What kind, what kind of flower? A flower comes to mind when I first saw these x-rays um, of yeah, all these. For me, it, for me, it looks like a tulip. Well, that is exactly right. To me, it looks like a tulip. Yep. So, so let's go over the basics of the Biochrome method. Um, number one, we have to disclose and remove biofilm because we're no longer cutting the tooth. It's critical that we use disclosing solution to help us to see the biofilm. Phosphoric acid does not remove biofilm. And then the next thing is modern cavity preparations. This is the Clark class two, which we'd love to be able to uh, help teach in the, in the schools in India. It's the opposite of a GV black prep. It's the opposite of a slot preparation. And uh, that's a conversation that we're going to have at the next webinar when we talk about the Clark class two. Um, the next thing is the biochrome matrices. These are not, um, these are not sectional matrices. These, these are anatomic tooth forms and they are very, um, they're, they, they, they have a lot of uh, features that are very different than you could ever do with a metal matrix. So it is quite an engineering feat to be able to take these matrices and for example, to put one on the mesial and one on the distal and essentially uh, create a crown without having to do a diagnostic wax up or any stents or layering. And then the next thing is injection molding of composite. We like to use uh, Filtech materials. The Filtech is the most tested composite with um, heating. And so we have a 
series of studies and we can forward those to everyone so they can read about the research that's been done with the heating, with injection molding, how we get less voids, how uh, we're able to mitigate polymerization shrinkage stress, but it's all about the delivery of the composite, injection molded, heated with flowable and paste together to create these beautiful monolithic forms. And then the final thing is the rockstar polish. That is something that takes a little bit of training and the matrix cannot cover the whole tooth. So we have areas that we have to cut back and create a beautiful, smooth finish because patients love the way these feel. Patients care more about the smoothness of the restoration than the aesthetics over time. They really care about the smoothness. It's something that they can touch every day with their tongue. So the Rockstar Polish is so key for a, a good patient-centered outcome for stain resistance and for strength. So I'm going to tell this story and then we're going to get started on the peg lateral. So uh, it's important that everyone on Facebook get ready to uh, answer these questions. So Disha, I don't want you to answer any more questions. I want to make sure that I want, <laughs> I want to make sure you let your other doctors answer these questions. Okay. So this is a patient who was self-referred. This is a patient who came to my office. She is the wife of an orthodontist. Okay. Her husband is an orthodontist and he did orthodontics on her. And this is not uncommon in the United States. She has had orthodontics done three times. She has been through orthodontics three times. And so here is her story. She had the orthodontics done, and then she had an undersized or peg lateral incisor on the 2-2, on the, uh, two -two, the, the left lateral incisor. And she sent this patient, um, or excuse me, the, the orthodontist sent the patient to the dentist in his town and said, will you please do some bonding? on the lateral incisor. So it's kind of like the story of the twins where the orthodontist wanted me to do bonding. And I said, no, <laughs> I am not going to do bonding. I'm going to do Bioclear. So I had to change the conversation. I had to be a parent to the case. Well, this poor dentist did what I did 25 years ago. He took a piece of flat mylar and he closed the space. And you can see that he closed the space and he was very happy. He was amazed. He says, wow, look, I got a good contact and he handed the mirror to the patient. This is once again, this is the wife of the orthodontist and the orthodontist, you know, her husband said, close the space. So the guy closed the space with bonding. He was happy, but when he handed the mirror to the patient, the patient was really mad. She was upset. And she said, I don't like it. It's ugly. It's the wrong blank. What do you think she said? This lateral incisor, it is the wrong blank. Fill in the blank. So tell me the word. Everybody tell me the word that you think she, she used to describe what this lateral incisor. Now, the dentist who did it was happy. He closed the space. He felt very good about that with his flat mylar. But she hated it. She said, it's the wrong blank. What, did she, what word did she use, everybody? Looks like a baby bump. A what? Looks like a baby bump from this angle. A baby bum? Yeah. <laughs> a baby bum? Like the bottom of a baby? <laughs> yeah. That's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> so it, it's to cheer you up. <laughs> it's the what? The cherub bum? <laughs> okay. Other than the baby bum. <laughs> No, it's the wrong blank. What did she say? It's the wrong what? Let's 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 have our Facebook Live people comment. It's the wrong what? So we have to wait. We'll wait a minute. We want to make sure everyone feels um, uh, engaged today. So we will wait for comments from Facebook Live. Trying to connect and get the answers from the Facebook. So just hold on. What was that, Disha? Uh, I'm just trying to connect and get the answers from the Facebook. Okay, that's right. I'll wait.
So the, the, most of them are saying that the shape is not right. Right, but I want them to think what word the patient used. It is the wrong blank. It is the wrong what? What uh, word? I have something like guava fruit, no <laughs> symmetry. <laughs> Asymmetric guava fruit. fruit. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. So let, let me go ahead and say that when I ask dentists, I've shown this case quite a bit. Um, Sometimes uh, dentists say it's the wrong color, right? Some people will say that. And um, it, the match there is not great, but color is less of a problem to patients than shape. And it comes, and that is because of, uh, of ne what was called negative space. And so the, the tooth casts a shadow or a silhouette, and that's what patients see over and over again. So, one of the other problems with the shape is that they had to change the emergence profile. So let me ask everyone again. He, this dentist, when he did the bonding here with his flat mylar, he changed the emergence profile super gingivally. So if we want to change the shape of a tooth and, and close a diastema or a black triangle, we need to change the emergence profile. So I'm going to ask a question to everyone on Facebook. If we're going to change the emergence profile, do you want to change it super gingivally, equigingivally, or subgingivally? So let's ask everybody that question. Do you, do you want to change the shape super gingivally, equigingivally, or subgingivally? So let's ask everyone. Let's ask everyone to uh, to to uh, type in an answer to that. Subgingivally. Okay. Is that did, did we did we allow the people to put that comment or are you are you answering that? <laughs> On Facebook, some say uh, subgingivally. Okay, so let me ask the next. Let me ask, let me ask the next question. Perfect, subgingivally. Um. So uh, we have another question from Ad. Uh, Aditya Shab Shahabadi. Hi, do we prepare the tooth before the restoration? The way we prepare the tooth is to apply disclosing solution and then we blast with aluminum trihydroxide with the bioblaster. And that is the only preparation that we need to do to do additive dentistry. That's a good question. So the, the, the answer to the other question, which is we need to change the emergence profile subgingively. So here's the next question for everybody. How do you change the emergence profile subgingivally with, comp with composite? How do you reflect the soft tissue? How are you able to change this, the emergence profile subgingivally with composite? How does that happen? Does everyone understand the question, Disha? Uh, uh, many also say equally gingivally on Facebook. Many have said equally gingivally. Mm -hmm. So let me answer equally gingivally. If you change this, the emergence profile equally gingivally, you're either going to have an overhang or a black triangle. And so that's been the problem that happened before we had Bioclear. So if we're going to create these beautiful pink and white aesthetics, that emergence profile has to change subgingivally. And we were never able to do that before Bioclear. So what Bioclear does for us, and, and, and until you do Bioclear, you won't understand this, that the matrix is so strong that it pushes the soft tissue away from the tooth. It pushes the soft tissue away from the tooth like retraction cord and then allows us to change emergence profile subgingivally. And then the soft tissue will remodel itself and then we get this beautiful pink and white aesthetic. It's something that is very central to the Bioclear method, which is this beautiful pink and white aesthetics that people absolutely love. 
So what we're going to be doing now, uh, oh, Dr. Jacob PCS, what are the chances of fracture? Well, if we create a monolithic restoration that is injection overmolded, and if we have the right clearances on the incisal edge, we see very few fractures, but we have uh, quite a few uh, rules for injection overmolding. And one of them is that the incisal edge has to be two millimeters thick buccolingually. So um, let's go ahead and take a peek here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and um, talk about this case for just a minute, and then I want to show how to actually do the peg lateral uh, procedure. And then I think that'll answer some of your questions. So the interesting thing about this case, let's go back to the wife of the orthodontist. Um, the dentist that did the bonding that the, that the patient didn't like, he does not get to do her biker treatment. She was mad. She went on the internet. She found me. She came in for a consultation. And so when I look at this case, we're going to be doing a lot of things. I'm going to be moving the midline over here so I can uh, split the distance between these two teeth. Uh, I want to upright the um, I want to upright the midline. So this is the smile design gauge. This is one of the tools that we use for uh, both diagnosis and then to treat the case. So I'm going to move the midline over. That will allow me to uh, mitigate the space here. So I'll do both the centrals and the laterals. In fact, in this case, we're going to be injection over molding about 20 teeth because she wants all her black triangles to go away. So in a case like this, by the time you finish a case like this, that's what it's going to look like. So we're going to injection over mold about 20 teeth. And the charge for Bioclear should be very similar to what you would charge for a porcelain veneer. So is it is it rupees in India? What is it? I forget. Is it rupees? Yes, it's rupees. How many how many rupees for a porcelain veneer? No, say fifteen thousand. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so do the so do the math. That's fifteen thousand times one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred and sixty dollars, close to. Yeah. So so how many rupees again? 15,000. 15,000. So 15,000. Yeah, so, so, so you can do the math, but this, this case is, that would be uh, 15,000. That's 15, 15,000 rupees. So that would be 300,000 rupees to do her case, I believe for 20 teeth. Is that right? Um, that's what you propose. That's yeah, what you're so proposing. And guess no, what? No, no. If fifteen thousand, I would be per tooth, per tooth. Not, not. Yes. I don't think anybody would do a, a, a veneer for less than fifteen thousand a tooth. Yeah. Got so it. what I'm saying is, this case, she's ready because she wants all her black triangles eliminated. She wants to have their teeth done with the Bicler method. We're gonna have, we're gonna add the missing incisal edges. We're gonna injection over mold twenty teeth. That's three hundred thousand rupee case. Here's the point. I don't get to do a $300,000 or 300,000 rupee case every day. But if you don't have the skills, if you don't understand the Bioclare method, if you don't have the right equipment, you will never ever in your life get to do a case like this. And if you do the Bioclare method, at some point, someone will walk in your door and say, I want Bioclare, whether it's one teeth or 20 teeth, it is amazing, but you have to be ready. And here's the point. The point is the doctor that did the bonding, okay, with his flat mylar does not get to do the 300, that, that 300, um, the 300,000 rupee case because he is not a bioclear specialist. So the exciting thing is if people want to do this, it's a journey. And someday you will have these big, big cases that walk in and the patients will demand the Bioclare method because that is coming to your city. We have more people watching Bioclare videos in India than anywhere else. And most of those people watching those Bioclare videos are patients. I get emails all the time 
had patients in India saying, where's a biker specialist in my town in India? So this is something that is exploding in popularity with patients in India. And when, when I was in India, I saw lots of advertisement for Gucci and Rolls Royce and Mercedes. You know, there is wealth in India like everywhere else and there is status and people, people are asking for Bioclear. It is something that people want, that people see that it is a quality thing. And that's pretty exciting. So um, what I'm going to be doing now is we're going to be um, we're going to be doing a peg lateral exercise. So I need to change to the microscope. Hey, Disha. Yes, Dr. Clark. We've had a small change. We're not doing the peg lateral today. Okay. Okay. So Disha, we had a little bit of a confusion. We're, what we're going to be doing today instead is we're going to be doing black triangle and deep carries at the same time. Okay. Okay, that will be great. Good. Okay. So we're going to switch to the microscope feed and uh, we're going to be doing this case. And then after I finish this case, Disha, we're going to go ahead and have you go through your presentation. Okay. Um, okay. All right, here we go. So if we can have uh, people asking questions as we go along, we can answer them. Um, yeah, I, I think I answered that. There we go. All right. So when we do a case like this, when we do a case like this, the first thing I'm going to do is think about, okay, what is next? What are the steps to appropriately treat a case like this? So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be injection over molding the two central incisors. And with Bioclear, we typically do a little bit of additive dentistry. And then once I finish the centrals, the patient's going to come back and possibly do the laterals and the canines with an aesthetic upgrade. So we'll, we'll be adding a little bit of volume onto the teeth, about a half a millimeter to help for blending. All right. And so let me, um, can I have my models over there? So let me show you a couple of problems with traditional dentistry. And so let me show the case preoperatively. Disha, can everyone see the image? Uh, yes, Dr. Clark, it's clear to me. Okay, yes, good. We can. All right, so let's take a look at some possible outcomes for this case. Now, this is a not a very good outcome, okay? This was done with one of these new omnichromatic materials, it's very translucent. With the Bioclear method, we do not use translucent composites. If you take a look at this, this is a case where there was no radius bevel, there was no additive dentistry, but they just did a margin like the old days with these new omnichromatic materials. Now, if that omnichromatic material was sitting on the facial, that would be okay, because it's just translucent. But over here, you just, it, it, like I said, it's not the look that we want. So we use, Filtech Supreme Ultra, because we like the opacity of Filtech Supreme Ultra to rejuvenate the tooth. So that is something that has three things that are wrong. They use the wrong composite, no radius bevel, and no additive. The next tooth that you'll see here is we did two things correctly. This tooth was treated. We did it in a webinar the other day. I didn't do the radius bevel. I didn't um, on, a, on a deep class three, we do have to prep the tooth with the radius bevel. And Disha, can you see that? That there's just a little bit of grayness there? We did the Bioclear method. We used Filtech Supreme Ultra, but we did not do the radius bevel. And you can see that there's a, a change in the color of the, uh, you can see the difference between the, the composite and the tooth. Can you see that, Disha, or not? Yes, Dr. Clark, I can see that. Okay. So that's... Yeah. yeah, and so this is the full Bioclear method with a radius bevel, additive dentistry. We added about a half a millimeter of fullness with Filtech Supreme Ultra, and you, the, the, the blending now is perfect. And the thing is, I mean, this deniform is crazy, crazy white. So to match this is very challenging. 
So that's our goal. So what we're going to be doing is, um, so if I were doing this case clinically, I'm thinking about how do I blend? How do I take care of all these things? And then all of the logistical steps about the bioclay method. So the first thing that I'm going to do before the rubber dam goes on is I'll take the tr uh, true contact sander between all the contacts. And that allows us to have a beautiful rubber dam. If you don't take the true contact sander through, the rubber dam will tear. So here's an example that we show at the learning center of a perfectly punched rubber dam that helps us to keep the gingival margins perfect with Bioclear. But to get a rubber dam through the contacts, you have to take the true contact sander first. And then before the rubber dam goes on, I know that I'm going to have to optimize the contacts. The number one reason that, the, that we have a problem with Bioclear is because the matrices are not seeded. And the number one reason that we um, don't have a seeded matrix is people did not optimize the contacts. So we're not going to open the contact. We're just going to sand the contact lightly. Now I'm going to take the last in the red true contact sander. It's double sided. And that allows me to have a contact that's just lightened. It broadens the contact and allows the matrix to slide all the way to the bottom of the sulcus. <clears throat> OK. So before my rubber dam goes on, I'm now going to measure with the black with the black triangle gauge. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to measure from the facial with the black triangle gauge. And that is binding at the blue. And then on the lingual, it's binding between blue and green. So then I would ask the patient what their preference was. I would say, for this black triangle, you're really sort of between sizes. Is it OK for me to leave a little black triangle or not? And if I close the black triangle completely, the tooth will look a little bit more rectangular. Usually the patients say, make the black triangle go away. So um, with the black triangle kit, can you get me the black triangle kit, please? So with the black triangle kit, here's how the kit comes. And I'm sorry that our camera's not working today. Next time we'll have it working and we'll show you what this looks like. So with the black triangle kit, what you have are you have a small and a large tub. You have the disclosing solution, the sanders, and the gauge. Sorry, this is so blown up. So in this case, we're going to use the large matrices. And I'm going to be using a pair of the blue matrices here. Now, this is a really fun exercise to do. And we want to set up live remote hands-on classes in India like we do in the United States, where you have a chance to injection mold with these new exciting uh, black triangle matrices that are custom built for black triangles. So I'm going to use a pair of the blue matrices. And you always have to slide them in at about a 45 degree because of the curvature. And then I'll slide another blue one in like so. So if the matrix doesn't go in place, I have to remove the matrices and do some sanding. So you'll notice that we have a nice closure of the black triangle. This is the new HD material that is as strong as stainless steel. Now you do need to grip the matrix with your hands. You can't just push on it like this because it'll bend. So you have to grip it against the tooth and seat it all the way down. Now on the distal, I'm going to be using classic Bioclear. So this is the A102. It's a very curvy matrix. This is from the original Bioclear kit, and I'm going to be using it in the HD. So I'm giving everyone to see a chance to see two different types of matrices. This is classic Bioclear. You could use this for black triangles, but the black triangle matrix is a lot easier to use. So this is for standard fillings, right? Standard restorations. I'm going to slide the matrix down. I'm fighting the matrix. So now I've got to go back in and I've got to sand the contact because now that I have matrices here, this matrix, this contact got tight. So I'm going to sand this to lighten the contact, but not open the contact. So I'm sanding here and that's still pretty tight. Let me have the red sander one time. That's the double-sided sander. And that's 
should allow the matrix to come in and seat all the way apically. So I'm all set up. My matrix is all the way subgingival and I'm ready for injection molding. So I like to try the matrices in before the rubber dam goes on to see what the relationship is with the soft tissue and the matrix. So now I would take the matrices off, put on the rubber dam. We're two hours today. Right, we've got nine minutes. And then Disha's time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Disha, I'm going to go as fast as I can here. We're gonna we're gonna, you're gonna be more like six forty my time before you get started. Okay, Disha, are we all right with that? Oh uh, yes, Doctor Clark. Uh, Doctor Clark, if you could just tell them a little about the radial bevel and the prep which we have to do because I think that's one of the missing link which uh, uh, you know dentists here are not able to get that part. Uh, yeah. So it will be great if they have that from you. So we are now doing, um, Carissa is doing a video right now with the Clark class two that's actually done. We can send you a link for that. So this is the burr kit from Comet. And this is the burr that we could use for the radius bevel. This is burr number two. So what we wanna do with the radius bevel is, and this is part of all of the learning center curriculum that we teach. The radius bevel needs to be about the same width as the deficient two structure here. So my radius bevel is going to be about that big and that allows us to blend the restoration. So you can do this with different burrs, but this burr is specifically built for the radius bevel. And then um, you can also cut this. Cut my three matrices just right away. You can also cut this with the standard burr, but it's a little bit harder to do because this burr is convex, and we have to be very active with our hands to create a convex radius bevel. So you can use the same burr, but it's a little bit more challenging. Now I'm just going to scratch all of this tooth up so I can do, um, so I can get the composite to stick to the deniform tooth. Once again, I don't prep the tooth clinically. We just use disclosing and blasting. So I'm just cleaning all this. I'm just getting the glaze off of my denim, off of my tooth. So we're going to go ahead and do the one tooth here. I'm going to injection mold that and quickly sculpt that. So now we're ready to injection mold. That's the radius bevel. And so our goal today is to briefly discuss all these things. And we can have an opportunity later to talk more about all the cavity preparations. There is a lot to talk about. I wanted everyone to get a picture of how this thing works from start to finish. I know it's a little bit frustrating because everybody wants all the answers today. <laughs> I do too, but BioClear is a journey. So that's all the time that we're gonna have to talk about the radius bevel. We can talk about it maybe quickly in the wrap up. So now we're ready for injection molding. So could I have some acid etch? So we would acid etch the tooth, rinse and dry, which we're, gonna, we're not gonna show you today. And then what we do is we, we massage the Scotch bond universal into the dent tubules for a full 20 seconds, which is forever. People don't spend enough time doing this. So we don't use liners. We don't use Gluma. We just do modern cavity preparations with selective carriers retention when appropriate. That's 20 seconds. And then we're gonna air thin and light cure. Go. So that's 10 seconds. Okay, moving the filter away. All right. And now we're ready for injection molding. So there's three phases of injection molding. Number one is adhesive as a surfactant. So now we're going to go ahead and get the entire complex wet. Remember, we have acid etched this previously. We just didn't show you this because it's a deniform. So now your job is to simply get the tooth very wet with adhesive as a simple surfactant.
little more adhesive, please. Now we're going to air thin this, but not light cure. Now we're going to inject the heated flowable composite. And so I've got all these things in the heat sink heater. And that's at about 68 degrees centigrade, I believe. We're going to inject the heated Filtech Supreme Ultra flowable at about a 45 degrees starting at the palatal, coming out to the facial. And then I'm going to coat the contact here. And then I'll do the mesial, same thing. This is heated flowable composite, and then we coat the contact. And now I'm going to go ahead and marry the flowable composite that was injected from the facial. And we actually fill the lingual in a case like this because we're doing an aesthetic upgrade of the tooth. The last thing I'll do is to bring in my heated paste composite. We're gonna push the matrices apart and start injection molding my uh, compule is about a half a millimeter off the tooth. We're going to push the paste in like so. You'll notice that the matrix is doing a beautiful job of containing the composite. I'll use the neighboring tooth as a reference. I'm going to massage the paste like this, massage like this, and then we'll bring in and gently scoop out any excess on the gingival. We'll scoop away any excess here. Wipe, please. We'll scoop right here. And then clinically, you'll need a dry brush because you'll typically have excess that goes on the wrong side of the matrix there. And dry brush. And then I'll do one more dry brush on the lingual. Move that burr block for a minute before I impale myself again. And we look good. Let's go ahead and cure. Now I know this is a lot going on all at once. I wanted everyone just to kind of get shocked here, Disha. Okay, move, move, the, move the paddle now. And just to see what's possible when someone does the BioClear method every day, all day for 20 years. <laughs> you can get very fast at the BioClear method. Yeah, Charlie's Rockstar Polish video is done, right? So all right, so now we're going to go ahead and take the matrices off. And it's very important to take the explorer and reach under the contact. This is the Clark Explorer, it's super helpful. This is monolithic composite. It has about the same compressive strength as Emacs Press. And let me go ahead and have the hemostat. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to zoom in right here, and I'm going to show you what this monolithic restoration looks like. Say, so Disha, can you see this yellow right there? Disha, can you see that yellow right there? Uh, yes, Dr. Clark, I can see that. What does everybody think that is? Let's see if your people understand what that orange is. Is it unpolymerized resin? Yes, that is unpolymerized that, resin. That is adhesive. That is adhesive. Okay. And it, I haven't completely cured it up there. That adhesive started here and went all the way to the incisal edge. I want you to look at this beautiful, amazing, crazy emergence profile. So did Dr. Clark uh -huh. change the emergence profile subjectively? Yes, he did. That is Dr. Clark. Yes, Dr. Clark, I have a question right here. Uh, yeah. I'm Dr. Harsh. Uh, it's a beautiful emergence profile. Now, since we discussed about building an emergence profile subgingivally, so how do you isolate subgingivally because there is circular fluid? So how do we get a proper isolation subgingivally so that circular fluid does not affect the bonding procedures? I would add to his question, do you la do you use laser every time when you do a diastema closure? I, I don't own a laser. Lasers are great, but I, I don't use them for this. Uh, the second okay. question about isolation is, we give a little bit of local anesthetic that will 
provides some hemostasis and the matrix provides a little bit of lateral pressure against the gums. And so we're able to, because the matrix is only there for you know a few seconds before we injection mold, with the rubber dam, it is literally bone dry. It is amazing. So a lot of doctors doing BioClear are using a microscope. And when you do your first BioClear case and you look under the microscope, you'll say, wow, that is dry. <laughs> so it's one of the miracles of the BioClear method. And it's, it was something that really surprised me how when you create that gentle lateral pressure of the matrix, that we don't get, that we don't get bleeding or curricular fluid. The best way to so stop the, the best way to stop bleeding is direct pressure, and that's what the matrix does. So, now what I want to do is I want to finish the procedure quickly because we need to get to Disha, and then we can and then we can answer some of these questions as we go along because I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to um, not get done here. So let me go ahead and, and we're going to bring in the burr. We're going to cut exactly uh, one millimeter from the incisal edge. Go. And then we come along here, we're gonna cut about one and a half millimeters from the tooth because we're gonna veneer over the tooth. Soft flex XT disc. Now we're gonna bring the soft flex XT disc this is the 3M disc. I'm gonna bring this to grade and we start on the incisal edge. And we're going to tip that disc about 15 degrees to the palatal because that's the typical wear pattern. Now, each case will be a little bit different, but these incisal edges are really important to the patient. And so I'm going to bring this in at about 15 degrees, like so. Then we'll bring the disc in the inverted position. I'm gonna roll it like this. So in the case like this, I'll be veneering over the facial, leaving about a half to one millimeter of, of composite. Slow the disc down. We're gonna round our incisal embrasures. Then I like to come in and do a 45 degree bevel. Now, Disha, this is kind of new. This keeps us from violating the neutral space. I'm gonna roll this in at 45 degrees here and 45 degrees on the palatal. And that's my general shape. Now, of course, I'm gonna be doing other teeth later, but I just, like I said, I wanted to show you the process for a single tooth. And now we have the magic mix. So then we'll bring in our magic mix. Now, normally I would be doing the entire quadrant. And um, so should I, go, should I go ahead and do the- Well, we can, we can send Disha the link to the um, Rockstar. So Disha, maybe the thing to do now, it's, six, it's 6.30. Would people like to see the rock star polish or should we go ahead and do your presentation now? What do you think? Um, Dr. Clark, I think we'll see the rock star polisher that that will uh, be more beneficial for all. So would you like to see that now? Uh, yes, we'll just go ahead and see that. Okay. So the rock star polish is a two step. This is um, the magic mix. And so we put some up here on the vestibule. There you go. Thank you, Tanya. This is, the, this is the, what comes with the system. So we're going to go ahead and get a disposable cup, run this at about medium speed, getting fresh magic mix every few seconds. Okay, do you have a, do you have a little dish ready? We're just gonna make a mess. Okay, and now we're going to go to the final, which is the Rockstar Polishing Cup. We've got to get all the magic mix off. Okay. 
You're not gonna. Okay. All right. And now this is the Rockstar polishing cup. We're gonna start with this dry. And then we'll with light pressure and constant movement. Okay, go ahead. And then I can go ahead and use the cup on its side to create a little bit of mammal on groove development. And now wet. Now we're going to stop and we're going to stop and move to heavy pressure, about three pounds, slow movement and constant air water to cool the tooth. And that is the Rockstar Polish. This is and that beautiful. can take that can take six minutes from start to finish when you get good at it. Now you won't be that fast the first time, right, Disha? <laughs> but this is a learned skill. Uh, I, uh, I but I feel that compared to any other polisher, I I get polished very fast when I uh, I use Rockstar Polish. I think it's just a trick that um, you know we just get the hack of it and it becomes very easy very good disha all right so we uh we want to make sure and get to all of our content we'll answer the questions at the end so let's go ahead and trade now disha i'm going to let you go ahead and uh do the presentation and then like i said we can answer questions at the wrap-up time all right so, uh, Dr. Clark, I'll just take, uh, I won't share much. I'll just share one one case. Will that be okay? So that sure. we have more time for questions. Okay. So we're going to put your presentation up now, okay? Okay. I, I'll just share that now. We, now, we have your presentation. Oh, oh okay. 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 No, no. Okay. Disha, if you've got it, you put it up. Yes? Okay. Um, so I, my network is really poor, so I'll just go a little fast. Can uh, everybody see that? Yeah, we can see. Yes, yes. We can see okay. that. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Clark. Um, this is one case which I really, really liked and uh, I love treating this patient. So this was a very young boy about uh, 20 to 20 years of age and he was traveling for a vacation in next two days. So um, he he had a bike accident and he fractured his teeth. Um, and you know, uh, he was having a lot of, he was in a lot of pain. So we did his um, root canal treatment. And um, then we decided uh, to, because it was a trauma case and we did not, he had injured his lips and everything. Uh, we did not want to give him the crown. So we decided to bioclear. So I put in short post, uh, which was absolutely conservative without drilling. And then um, this, yeah, we did the post. Um, and then I used these uh, matrices, which are called as 360 degree veneer matrices. So if you see, this was a tooth I was um, restoring here. And um, do you see that, that I have another matrice just next to it? So that matrice is called as a shield or a shepherd matrice. So what that, that what this matrice does is it prevents this matrice to come into the space of the adjacent tooth. So that is a very important step which we often miss and then our proportions go wrong. So this is something which uh, I wanted to say. And then um, I etched, sandblasted, etched, uh, put in my bonding agent. Uh, we did not cure the bonding agent. And then we um, did the injection molding 
and uh, that's after injection molding and yeah the adjacent tooth also had a bit of fracture so we can see i have prepped the tooth and uh, we have um, like the amount of tooth which is fractured is was the size of my bevel so that's the key to know how much um, we have to prep and then um, this was the Disha, are you there? We are not able to hear you. Okay, so have, have we lost Disha temporarily? Yeah, I guess we lost her, yeah. Okay, well, you know, what I could do is um, we could answer a few questions until we get Disha back on the line. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, that's right. So uh, my first question to uh, Dr. David Clark is, is when you're using BioClear technique, you f the first, after etching, the first layer of adhesive is what we cure. And the next layer of adhesive is with, we, which we don't cure and inject the flowable along with the uh, heated composite. Is that correct? That is correct. And so okay. the, the question that we ask ourselves with the BioClear method is always this. Number one, do we have freshly cut dentin tubules anywhere near the pulp? And if we have freshly cut dentin tubules near the pulp, we're going to massage the Scotch Bond Universal adhesive into dentin tubules for a full 20 seconds, air thin and cure. Now, if I'm doing a peg lateral, we, we don't have to do the, uh, the separate curing of the adhesive step. We go straight to injection molding. So injection molding is one, two, three. Adhesive as a surfactant, air thin but not like here, then flowable, then paste. So the question is always, do we have freshly cut dentin tubules, which we're going to have a lot of the time. So that's when we have uh, the step where we cure the adhesive. So does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So the so the people always ask, when do I cure the adhesive? It's a really simple question. Ask yourself this. Do you have freshly cut dentin tubules anywhere near the pulp? If the answer is yes, then you will need to cure the adhesive over the dentin after massaging for 20 seconds, air thin and cure, and then you injection mold. And then you repeat the adhesive as a surfactant. Okay, is Disha back with us? Um, yes, I'm back, but I'm sorry. Where did I stop? I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, Disha, you were on slide 33. Okay, so that was the si uh, the prep size. And um, so the X equals to Y. The X is the amount of tooth structure, which I have kind of lost. So um, then we did this. Um, uh, this was the picture after the finishing, but I've not completed the polishing yet. So if you see, I've given in a bit of specular highlights and a bit of uh, grooves. So that gives it a bit of natural structure, but we do not place, um, you know, grooves which will retain plaque. So we always have to take care that uh, it's a non-retentive, uh, plaque retentive area. And this was the result which um, I got after doing my uh, Rockstar polishing. And um, I, I just love it. I, I love the Rockstar polishing and some more views and this is the symmetry this is a smile gauge which we get from the biopia center and it's really helpful to um, just orient ourselves whether we are going right or wrong we can use it a couple of times while doing our thesis yes so we had many questions that you know um do, do why why does bioclear not fracture what what is it so if you see that i have kept my incisal edge a little thicker Sometimes patients initially will be, you know, they, they, they'll keep poking the tongue there and, you know, but then eventually it, it just settles for the patient. And then I, I have added this more on a labial side, so it does not um, interfere with my occlusion. So that is something which uh, gives it the strength. And that is the palatal finish which we got. 
um, and that's the rock star polishing. And this was the result, the final result. And this, this boy doesn't want now to go into crowns. He's like, I'm fine with them. I love this. And I don't want you to change them into crowns. So yes, and then I did a six month recall. I was, I didn't, I didn't have, he just dropped in and I was not prepared for photography, but I um, made him take a photograph under microscope and uh, yes. So you can see in this picture, the polish is so well, even after six months. I didn't do anything for him. I just didn't do anything. I just sent him back. So I think that's the uh, power of, um, the bio clear and uh, quick very quickly i'll just show you another case which i feel is very nice this was a, a gentleman about 40 um, 50 years of age and um, he um, he had this one one he had a very poor periodontal health he was highly diabetic and he came to me one year back with a very mobile one one so we had done an endodontic treatment at that time and uh, initiated a treatment and the tooth has gone uh, become non mobile but he came back because his um, uh, son was getting married just next week but i would not dare to give a crown to him at this um, condition because I was not sure about his periodontal health. So we completed his root canal, we did the blasting, and um, that's how I could not get the proper retraction. So I had to split down in this case. And um, I think my network is again going to go. So I'm going to go rush. So I used a 101 matrice over here. And the only thing different that I did here was I did inject a bit, a bit of pink color gingiva, uh, gingival composite just to you know give it a better look and um, that was his smile later and that was the result after um say i think one day or two days so that was the result so dr clark i would stop at here and i would um wish want to um go ahead with your presentation and the questions which everybody has Wow, those were, I, I really, uh, I, Disha, I really enjoyed looking at your cases. Um, I'm really proud of all of the, your learning and you've done a nice job of really sharing that with everyone. I, I want everyone to, to stop and, and, and think about this for a minute. You are all experiencing a major shift in the dental world. Implants were a big change. And rotary files were a big change. Injection molding with the bioclear method is a big change. And it is disruptive. <laughs> it is uncomfortable for some people, but it is something that scientifically is uh, very solid. And the people at 3M have been doing uh, extensive research on the bioclear method. And now we have partnered with 3M and are teaching the bioclear method globally, we uh, have been working with the folks in India for I think about 10 years now, it's been a while. And we would like to uh, you know, really invite everyone to uh, grow together. We have some folks who have been to the learning center such as Disha and these people are, are experts in the bioclear method. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I am just one person. And so it's important that we uh, use our new experts like Disha to help share and to grow the bioclear method. Bioclear method is a very disciplined uh, approach. It is the same. So when you hear someone who has been to the learning center, who uh, has gone through, uh, Disha has gone through master track training, you'll hear the same uh, lexicon, the same words like the shield matrix or, or, um, or uh, delayed wedging or you know, injection molding. And, and these are terms um, that we all share and that allow us to grow together. So uh, that I think it's, I think it's a, an exciting moment and I want everyone to kind of celebrate a little bit <laughs> even though the world is in a weird place right now with COVID, but you know, that's going to pass. And, and it's, I think it's exciting that we all get to move forward with this new movement of, of the bioclear method together. So I just wanted to take a minute and kind of 
talk about our, our Bioclear family. Um, what I'd like to do now is, is take some questions from the panelists. We have about eight more minutes that we can talk. Um, this is a question that's what I like to call an older question. So I got a question from Dr. Um, Katavkar. Dr. Katavkar, would, would you be concerned about curing shrinkage while injection molding with, with all of this composite? And the answer to that is that it's not that simple. Polymerization shrinkage is something that all composites do. If you layer it, it doesn't change the shrinkage dynamics. So one of the uh, fallacies, one of the um, unfortunate old conversations is, is that layering would mitigate polymerization shrinkage stress. Layering does not help us. So what we're doing with injection molding, whether it's in the anterior or if we're using a bulk fill in the posterior, is that with the Clark class two and with, with um, all of these anterior restorations, our C factor is less than one. In other words, when you put a filling in a hole, it has bad C factor. There's a lot of cavity walls and then the composite shrinks away. Now, in contrast, let's imagine that I was in India right now and I was with Disha and I gave her a big hug, okay? So imagine Disha standing there and she's not very big, okay? I'm bigger than her. So I'm gonna stand over here and give her a big bear hug, right? I would be the composite. I would be wrapping around Disha. There's more of me than there is of Disha. And as the, as the composite shrinks, it shrinks into compression and simply puts uh, what we call shrink wrapping. Or just like when you make a screwdriver, you inject the plastic around the metal blade of the screwdriver, it shrink wraps the two. So polymerization shrinkage in the Bioclear method can actually be favorable. And so it all depends on C factor. And because Bioclear goes around the tooth and not really in the tooth, those old conversations can disappear. So Disha did, Disha, did I explain that question that Dr. Kat, Katavkar asked about the, the, the shrinkage problem? Because we get that at every lecture. Yes, yes, we do get that. And um, even when I, I go, uh, I've been asked a couple of times, how do we prevent that shrinkage? Because we are, we are doing a complete wrap for the composite I, uh, for the tooth, I think it's not a problem. In BioClear, almost 80% um, of the tooth is covered in composite. So I think that's the, that's the best explanation Dr. Clark can give. Yeah, and it rinse, once again, it all gets to C factor. It all gets yes. to C factor. And maybe remember, we can discuss a little about C factor uh, next uh, seminar. If we have the time, we can discuss about the C factor. Yes, yes. So, um, so Dr. Clark, I have a few questions. Can I, um, from the Facebook? So, can I ask them if it's okay? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Um, so do we use floss ties in the BioClear method? So this question is by Dr. Tanushri. Yeah, floss ties are okay. I don't use them anymore. Um, one thing that we teach at the learning center is what's called a um, root overlay where we put a little button on the facial and then that holds the rubber dam back. Uh, one of my goals hopefully for you, Disha, is that you can continue to teach some of these uh, advanced principles with BioClear. There are many, many chapters. And so um, there is a way to really take some of the advantages of using those floss ties that, that people like to do with rubber dams and really taking it to another level with what's called the root overlay. So these are different chapters that, that Disha, that you could potentially share with your folks and 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 the, in your yes, group. Yes, so I'll I'll try to share that. I'll try to share the root overlay uh, details. Yeah, and that's but that that is the same principle as the floss ties because we love rubber dams, and I'm excited that whoever asked that question, I'm excited that you're using a rubber dam. Not ever, not everybody uses a rubber dam, and I think that 
um, that it's the mark of a great vehicular dentist to use a rubber dam. And, and, you know, here's the other thing is that with COVID putting a rubber dam on is going to uh, de de uh, decrease the amount of aerosol and virus uh, issues potentially. So um, that's something else to think about. Uh, we have a question from Sanket. Can this technique be used with palladant matrices in the posterior? So the question is, what about so, post- Dr. Clark, the next question which we have is- Oh, uh, say, uh, hang on a minute, Disha. I was just answering this question that was on the Zoom panel was from Sanket. The uh, question is- okay. Yeah, so, uh, so what we're going to be doing uh, to answer Sanket, we're gonna be talking about injection molding of posteriors next week. And this will be really exciting. Um, one of the problems with using uh, a palladant or metal matrix is that you don't have the ability to do what's called three-point curing with a metal matrix. So we're going to be showing you injection molding next week with these new uh, BioFit uh, posterior matrices that allow complete light penetration. So the answer is, okay. yeah, we can do injection molding of class twos, and that's what we're going to cover next week. So I think all that, right. You'll, I think that you're really going to enjoy. I love I love doing injection molded class twos. I love it. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Disha. So, uh, Dr. Clark, there's a question by Dr. Tanupriya. She's our uh, core endohavili member. Uh, when we acid etch and rinse dry with these matrices in place, are there any chances of moisture retaining inside them? One of the things that uh, people um, realize is that one of the best ways to get um, isolation and good hemostasis and good control of fluids are simple, old-fashioned, restorative uh, things. So the first thing is, if you give a little bit of uh, epinephrine in the area, if you give a little bit of anesthetic, that's going to cause some vasoconstriction and you'll have less curricular flu fluids or circular fluids. So a little bit of, uh, of epinephrine is helpful. When you place a rubber dam and then you place the matrix with the rubber dam, it creates enough lateral pressure that you get a beautiful seal. And I've been, I've done over a thousand bicycle restorations. I do everything at 16 and 24 power. There is no curricular fluid in these cases. I mean, the only time I've ever seen curricular fluid is when patients had uncontrolled periodontal disease and, and, and we have oozing of, 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 of soft tissue in, in the case. And so if we don't have, if the patient has completely uncontrolled periodontal disease, we shouldn't be doing Bioclear. I mean, we can do something temporary. So that was the only time I ever saw any curricular fluid. Uh, so it is amazing how we can manage this with simple, uh, simple restorative techniques using magnification, rubber dams, a little bit of a lidocaine, and the matrix puts enough pressure in there. It's bone dry, and I mean dry. Remember, it doesn't have to be dry for 20 minutes. It has to be dry for 20 seconds. Once the once we're injection molded, we're good. But this is a great question that people you the doctor who asked that question will be able to answer it when they use the bicler method and use a microscope, they'll see that it's dry. Remember, I showed some 10, I showed, I showed a 10 year outcome that looks perfect. We have 20 year outcomes on these things now. So Good question. the next question, uh, shall I go to the next question? Yep, we have one more question and we gotta wrap it up. Okay, so we have, um, why oh. don't we cure the first layer of adhesive on the enamel, but we cure the dentine? So uh, typically in BioClear, we do not cure the adhesive on the enamel. We just uh, directly inject. So that question is by Dr. Varsha Rao. So why don't we cure the first layer of the adhesive on enamel, but we cure the dentine? And that is a very good question. We're going to end up with that because that's one of the most important questions that we get. That's a good one. Dentin bonding and enamel bonding are two different animals. They're completely different. When we bond porcelain veneers to enamel, just enamel, we don't cure the adhesive. So what we understand with dentin, dentin is a funny animal. 
with dentin, we don't want any competing factors when we cure the adhesive because dentin bonding is a lot less predictable than enamel. So with dentin, we have to cure the adhesive independently and not disturb it and not have any competing factors while it's polymerizing over the dentin tubules because we want to eliminate sensitivity and dentin bonding is not great. It's just okay. And we need to help it as best we can. So once we take care of the dentin, then the adhesive is put on the enamel as a simple wetting agent, just like a porcelain veneer. So remember this, dentin and enamel are unrelated. Dentin and enamel are unrelated and their adhesion is unrelated. You can't think of them in the same way. And so I hope that that is a good start. I know everybody, I've been to India enough. I have enough friends from India. I know that you folks are so committed. You are so passionate about your dentistry. I, I commend all of you. I've never seen more passion and more hard workers than all of my friends in India. The problem is everybody wants to learn everything today, Disha. <laughs> <laughs> that is it, not it takes a lot of time it, it, because the syllabus is so big so yeah. vast that um, yeah I, 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 how we need to do about 10 sessions <laughs> to learn everything you know what all of you if you're committed to bioclear you're going to be learning about this for the next 20 years you're going to be getting better like me hopefully i'm still getting better 20 years later i'm still learning so we're advancing this together as a, as a wonderful community and wonderful family. So I just want to let everybody know, I know you'd like to have all the answers today and do everything today in your clinic. Uh, let's just get started and continue with successes. And there are so many conversations that we will have down the road together. So I want everyone to be patient. All right. <laughs> So we'll, uh, we'll call it a wrap, Dr. Clark, today. Yep. Yes. So Dr. Clark, I would really, really like to thank you for taking this time out, uh, specifically knowing that, you know, we are in all together different time zone. It's, you've been awake from 4 a.m., I'm sure, to give us this presentation, which was excellent. And I'm sure uh, these techniques will help us in our day-to-day -day practices. I would really like to thank uh, Carissa and Tanya, who's been extending all their organization help from past five to six days to make this webinar a success. I would also like to thank all the panelists for their participation. And uh, I would also like to thank all the team members from Endo Haveli, Dr. Rahul, uh, Dr. Sashang, Dr. Wazim, Dr. Nitin, who's been working very hard uh, to make this uh, a very um, approachable uh, to everybody on Facebook. Thank you so much, Dr. Clark, once again. It was a lovely session. And honestly, I again learned many things. Great. And we will see everyone next week. And yes. And so I'll just announce it, Dr. Clark. Will that be okay? Yes, please. Uh, so guys, we will have another session next week on 27th of May. Um, that is, but we have a little slight change in the time. It will start at 6.30 IST, that is Indian Standard uh, Time. And the topic would be Bioclear for the Posterior Solutions, where we'll be discussing class two. So Dr. Clark, if you can just give us a little more brief about what we would do next, uh, that would be great. So next, uh, next week, we will talk briefly about the Clark class two, uh, which is a completely different cavity preparation. But the interesting thing about injection molding the class two is it is actually somewhat similar to doing a black triangle procedure. And I think that when people come to the learning center, we think that anterior and posterior composites are completely different. And by the time that people finish, like with Disha, she will tell you that when she injection molds a black triangle, there are a lot of similarities to injection molding a class two. Um, you know, they're just teeth, enamel and dentin that have certain forces. So one of the beauties of the BioClear method is once you understand it of the simplicity and the consistency as a clinician, I don't want to be confused. I don't want to, um, I don't want to uh, have mistakes because I don't understand the principles or the 
or the steps. So the, the beautiful thing over the years is we now have a, a recipe and we'll, we'll share those recipes with everyone, whether it's a black triangle or a class two. So I look, I look forward to the class two next week. Great, that, that would be nice, Dr. Clark. So we'll see you again next week at 6.30. I think that would be 6 a.m. for you. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Disha. And Disha, those Thank Disha you so much, Dr. Clark. And thank you, Teresa. And thank you so much. Yes, Dr. Clark? Oh, and beautiful cases. I loved your cases. I love the bicycle case. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Clark. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.